I've got to step back and I got to rethink this and I've got to come at it from a different angle. Uh, as much as I hate to say it, I got to revamp this whole thing. It's, it's got to change because it's not, it's not going in the trajectory that I want. And I don't mean to sound frustrated, but I am a little frustrated. Hey guys, welcome to TCR. Sid here, thanks for clicking on the video. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Well, I have some tough decisions to make when it comes to my animals and I'm gonna ask for y'all's opinion. So let me tell you what's going on. We've been at this property now for seven years and we've done a lot of work to it. You guys have watched in different videos as we've added on to rooms, built structures outside for the animals, that we've bred different animals, processed different animals, and really tried to utilize the space that we have here and to do a lot of different things in different ways to kind of see what works for us best. It's been an adventure and we love it. We really enjoy our animals and the meat and the products that we get from having these different animals and what it's teaching our daughter. Frankie's learned so much about, you know, caring for animals and being responsible, animal husbandry and construction and just all of those things I think are really important lessons for her to learn. And we don't want to stop that, but sometimes we get into a situation where some of the animals don't work out the way we thought and so we're like oh we're gonna process them or oh i was gonna raise these to sell but it didn't work out so for example my geese that were sitting on that clutch of eggs that i talked about um, they ended up losing all of their eggs again and the ones that i put in the incubator the incubator was not a good incubator um, i followed it i had extra thermometers and humidifier uh, gauge readers in there to see just exactly like what it was at all times like I babysat that thing like nobody's business but I just feel like you know geese and peafowl eggs are a little bit trickier to hatch out anyway and long story short it just didn't go well I ended up with goose egg <laughs> zero goslings out of it which was a bummer because I was really hoping to sell some goslings and be able to kind of recoup some of what I've put into that breeding project. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. And sometimes that's the way it goes. And it's a bummer. All I can do is kind of learn from that mistake and move forward. Right now, we already sold our buck, our boar buck, Neil Diamond, uh, a couple months ago. And Caroline was pregnant at the time when we sold him. She kitted shortly thereafter. She had a boy and a girl. Uh, they are now 10 weeks old as of this week. It's time to sell the kids. This is kidding season. A lot of people are selling goats. Unfortunately, after COVID, a lot of people got into, that live closer to the city, I should say, got really into kind of trying their hand at being a little bit more sustainable and maybe trying their hand at, you know, buying their own meat to process or raising their own animals to some degree. And unfortunately, the market kind of got flooded out here which meant what happened for me is I had no problem buying, you know, 200 meat chickens in a season and selling out every year. I had no problem buying, um, you know, breeding turkey poults and selling out every year between Thanksgiving and Christmas um, and taking reservations for them. And it was like first come first serve and it was like a big thing. And the, the last two seasons, it has slowed down dramatically, uh, which is funny to me uh, that that's kind of having that sort of blowback a little bit on, uh, you know, people that farm locally and that sort of thing. Um, it's just expanded, I think, so much, which in some ways is a good thing, but in other ways, I think some people dabbled in it, decided they could get it cheaper at Walmart or whatever, and decided to go a different route. It's a little bit, I'm not gonna lie it sucks guys like it makes me a little bit angry because not to rant but it makes me a little bit angry because it was a good little um, you know poultry business uh, there wasn't really anybody else doing it out here when I started doing it I had a really good few year run of it and then right after the vid hit everybody kind of backed off and I was having a struggle bus trying to sell my meat all of a sudden and there was all of a sudden there was all these new people in the arena and it was like okay and they were doing it they were selling it for a lot cheaper they weren't necessarily 
not all, but some weren't necessarily feeding or raising their animals in pastured situations where they were eating, you know, better food. Um, so they were able to kind of, I guess, cut their costs a bit in some ways. But when you're doing it as a business and raising the poultry, you know, you have to be able to make a little bit of a profit. I'm not expecting to get, you know, super rich off of it, but I have to cover the cost of the feed. I have to cover the cost of the animals and the electricity to brood them. And all, you know, all of that has to kind of be factored in. So at the end of the day, it's still cheaper than something that you would buy at, you know, your fancier, um, food stores where they say, you know, oh, it's antibiotic free and it's hormone free and it's free range or whatever from like, you know, a Trader Joe's or something like that. But it's pricier than Walmart because of the quality and because of the work that's gone into it. So it, it's been a little bit of a bummer and we actually decided to hold off on birds this season because we had some things come up that we kind of had to shuffle around. I've listed my my goats because my kid wanted me to phase out the goats anyway which is why we got rid of neil having trouble selling those kids uh, i offered the the boy could either be banded or you know weathered or he could go intact um as a buck but I'm, i had very few nibbles and um and i also find that nobody's like if you list something as a certain price or you tell somebody a certain price Nobody even says, well, what about this? Will you take this for it? The only times I have ever had that really happen, it's like such an insulting amount less. It's like literally sometimes it'll be at like a 30% of what I'm asking. And I'm like, now I'm like paying you practically to take them. I'm taking such a loss. I'd rather just eat the animal myself. So, but it, it's just, um, it's tricky. The point for me, I guess, is that, you know, I might have to process these guys out a little bit younger. It gets expensive to keep them. They're not, you know, which is a bummer. I like having them. We don't have the kind of space that I would need to have to be able to really just kind of use them, I guess, as lawn ornaments. So I'm actively trying to, you know, seek buyers for them. Same thing with the sheep. You know, we're looking to switch out the sheep and we were gonna process them which we still might do. There's just some some fluctuations going on right now, you know, in our life and it just makes it a little bit tricky. So we're looking to maybe go back and to try some smaller options for meat in the area. Unfortunately, rabbits have gotten very popular in our area now um, as well. So I don't even know if switching to something smaller like rabbits to sell for meat would be an option. You know, the quail we were doing for a little while had very, very, rough time getting that going nobody wanted to buy quail or the eggs um so it was it's a little bit of a struggle i'm not gonna lie like it's a little bit like it's a bummer it's like you put a lot of work into something you put time you put money and all of you know your time is worth money your time is worth effort and so it's hard to kind of say oh well that's a bummer and by no means i don't mean to say this like oh like we're giving up or whatever we're just kind of reevaluating and shifting things around because the market in our area for these types of things has just kind of shifted very recently and so it's making it very tricky for us to just be like okay well you know we'll just keep doing the same thing and hopefully it'll turn around it's too expensive to put money into the business of it without seeing any clear way of it getting to the point where we want it. So again, um, I think with the inflation being what it is right now, and you know, even with you would think with you know food scarcity in some areas and empty shelves in some areas that it would you know help to bolster. Um, our security in that a little bit it hasn't quite gone down that way which i think is also very interesting and kind of says a lot about where we are right now um with with some of that uh, uh, about where our food comes from and and knowing what we're putting in our bodies and that kind of thing it does get a little bit frustrating for those of us that live this lifestyle and like to know what's in our food how it was raised how it was grown how it was processed, you know, all of those things are, are things that, you know, I guess some people just sort of take for granted or don't think about, even though there's some buzzwords around it and people like to talk, like they get excited about that. It's hard to say. And for me, the biggest thing is I will never stop doing it to some degree or another and really get it going to what it was 
and better uh, before this kind of economic shift? Uh, I don't know. I am going to keep chipping away at it. I do think right now that I am going to have to give up my larger animals for probably less than I want to in some form or another. Um, and that's a bummer, but it is what it is. And at this point, it's, it's just, it's costing too much to try to keep putting money into it. So I'm hopeful that, you know, I can find kind of a happy medium there where either like, for example, with the, with the sheep that either I process them out and basically sell them on the hoof, go in half with somebody so that basically at least covers my cost of my meat. Um, the problem with that here is then I have to pay the butcher to come and do it. We can't do it ourselves if we have somebody else come in on it like that, that's not just like a friend or a buddy. Um, so that really does cut into your profit and people just aren't willing to pay right now what it's worth and even when you break it down for them and explain well it's then it makes it this much per pound or then it's whatever they're still like oh well, that's kind of high and it's like but you're getting amazing quality and it's not like what you would buy at the store like and, and i guess to some people that doesn't matter which i guess bums me out like i take it seriously and you know i guess i have to just look at it like you know not everybody looks at things the way i do i get that i'm a little bit of an odd duck about certain things and i understand that um, but it does bum me out. I'm not going to lie. It does bum me out a bit, uh, that people don't have the same passion or enthusiasm sometimes as I do for certain things. I get it. I, I just going to keep plugging away. I'm, I'm going to shift into something else. I'm still kind of figuring it out. Like I said, I've tried quail that didn't really go over in our neck of the woods here very well. Um, and again, the market got saturated and then rabbit same thing we never tried we never even got to the point where we were going to do rabbit because uh it just got so saturated and people were just like being stuck with rabbits and then they weren't able to sell the meat uh people were just breeding them to sell and not and nobody was eating them like very few people were actually eating them which is i think weird i get i get it it's a it's a weird situation that we're in right now and i and it could just be like a a California thing, <laughs> um, particularly in our area. I'm gonna keep playing around with it. I'm gonna keep trying to figure it out, but if you've got a suggestion as to maybe something else we should try or look into, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Maybe you've had the same experience. Maybe you live in the same area and you've noticed the same things I'm noticing with these trends. Um, I'd be curious to see what you guys think. Like, And again, I'm sorry, I don't mean to go on like a rant about it. Maybe not so many four-legged quadrupeds that take up a lot of room and need a lot of hay um and and we'll see we'll see how it goes because the price of hay out here right now it's like 40 dollars a bale and it gets really expensive to feed everybody and you know this was this was always going to be a business not a hobby so when it's not turning a profit and i can't seem to find customers it makes it a challenge, makes it a struggle bus. So I've, I've, got to, I've got to step back and I got to rethink this and I've got to come at it from a different angle. Uh, as much as I hate to say it, I got to revamp this whole thing. It's, it's got to change because it's not, it's not going in the trajectory that I want. And I don't mean to sound frustrated, but I am a little frustrated. I think it's gonna, I think things are gonna turn around. I'm hopeful that they'll turn around. I just got it in the interim here. I just gotta figure out how I'm going to maneuver it and how I'm going to get through this hump um, without, you know, it costing me an arm and a leg, you know, doing what's best for the animals and doing what's best for our family. Um, no pressure, right? <laughs> no pressure. So drop me a comment, guys. Let me know, um, you know, maybe your experiences, if you've done some of this yourself and run into some similar situations where you feel like the customer base is kind of shifting some um give me some tips give me some pointers give me some of your experience or just share in your frustration as well or tell me i'm crazy and that i must be doing something wrong because everything's peachy keen and i'm i'm nuts because that's possible too i'm i'm not uh i'm not the type that doesn't think that 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 could be the case too but drop me a comment let me know you guys i don't mean to make this kind of like a downer video i don't want it to sound like a downer video I'm always still fired up about this lifestyle. There's nothing that I love more than this. I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I get frustrated. Today's one of those days. 
Thanks for watching, guys. If you stuck with me this long, I appreciate you, and we will see you next time.